podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. Wait. Well, go on, you know, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> man, hey man, listen man We got some guys here today, y'all They don't need no introduction I've been knowing them a long time, guys uh, These guys right here I, You know this is a clothing store We actually broadcast out of a clothing store And who better to talk to us about the clothing and apparel industry Than these two guys here, man We got Q and Dre, man These guys go back Way back with your boy E, man. These boys know some stuff, man. They seen the skinny me, then they seen the fat me, they seen the muscle me. They just, hey, hey, I, I'm, I'm just like uh, the clump, uh, uh, Professor Clump. <laughs> <laughs> I might switch up any time. So, man, how y'all doing, man? Awesome, man. A little bit tired. Been on the road eight days. Eight days. Yeah. Eight is enough. Oh man, we got one more to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> One more to go. Is that the longest y'all ever been on the road to do something like this? Uh, no. Probably uh, 10. 10, 10 probably be the longest. Yeah. Man, I, yeah. I, I, we got to go back down through that, though, don't we? Yes. Okay. So um, tell us about where you were raised, your upbringing, all of that. Let's start with Q first. Uh, I'm from the Bronx. I was born, born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. Um, I moved out of New York about four years, so I live in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina now. Do you miss it? Uh, to live, no. Why? Just, What's bad about New York? Now that I'm older, it's like I get you get more for your money, you know. And to be honest, the gun laws. <laughs> One of the first What's thing the I gun was laws able to out do, there like? It, it, you just can't, you can't have a gun. <laughs> but is you it okay? Because I know it's dangerous in New York. Depends on what part, right? Yeah. But they still well, carry no, guns regardless, it's, don't it's, they? It's, well, the thing is, all the criminals have them, but the average, you know. They still be sneaking the and having guys it. Don't have it. Not, I mean, the, not the non-criminal. You can't the non-criminal because if you got one, you automatically a criminal. You get pulled over. You going to jail. Ain't that what happened to Ja Rule? Ain't that what happened to Lil Wayne? A whole bunch of Lil Wayne and Even ja Rule. if you have it in your car and don't take it out of the car with don't you, don't matter. You cannot have a gun on you. Really? That happened. You can't. You can't even have a handgun. On in your house, you have to have like a shotgun in your house. You can't even have a handgun. Period. Really? Yeah. Man. Wow. Well, let's carry a yeah. shotgun everywhere. So Brooklyn, coming up as a kid, man, like, Bronx. Being, I'm, oh, you from yeah, the I Bronx? Was in Bro I, I mean, I was born in Brooklyn, but I was raised in the Bronx. You was born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. Ain't that where uh, uh, Fat Joe from? Oh, yeah, BX. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's where Fat yes, Joe sir. from, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, lean back. <laughs> so that, okay, but what's, right. which one's better? Because I always heard about Brooklyn, Bronx, and Queens. Be careful. Them three. Be careful. So which one's the best? It's not that one is better. It's that <laughs> they all different. They totally right. different. Harlem's right. different. You know what I mean? He's from Mount Vernon, which is like right outside of the boroughs. Well, Mount Vernon is like rich area, right? We basically border the um border the Bronx on three sides. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah and, you know, it's, it's like it's, four square it's, miles. It's cool. Yeah, it, yeah, it actually used to be a part of the city. Like I think back in the '60s, mm -hmm. and then um, it separated and became part of Westchester County. See, I don't ever hear that. about. I hear about Mount Vernon, but not like I hear about Brooklyn, Bronx, or Queens. Yeah, it's like it's in all the movies tomorrow. and all the everything. Yeah. That's all you hear you people got a talk lot of about. Celebrities from Mount Vernon, though. Yeah, yeah. Really? Is, is like Denzel who? From Mount yeah, Denzel. Yeah. Oh, that's all you gotta say is then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. heavy D. He yeah. know he's part Jamaican, so I. Uh, uh, right, right. Like, <laughs> like, like why? Like oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, you got a lot of Jamaicans in Queens too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, like, a lot of Jamaicans in Mount Vernon. Really? Yeah. Jamaicans just took over New York. Hey, 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 hey. Jamaicans and Puerto Ricans is probably the two, right, two of the most that's out there. Really? You know, they tried to take over Dallas, but we put a stop there. Don't start. Don't let y'all know that before we go any that. further. Don't, don't go it was there. a thing went down in Dallas where the Jamaicans tried to come down here and do some things, and uh, we had to have a meeting. Okay, we weren't talking about all that. Okay? Open up a couple of restaurants, and that's it. For oh, they got yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. said we got a few, but we so got a limit on how many we let. I okay. don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> one, of my, one of my best friends actually left Mount Vernon and came to Dallas. What? It was, okay. about, it was about twenty years ago. Okay, he's still here. I'm still here. See? We shut him down. He's still here. Check up on him. Yeah, they set up shop. <laughs> so what was it like growing up in that area for you? Was it like dangerous for you or? Um, I mean, you know, a lot of the Bronx is, you know, is the hood. But I was raised in Co-op City, which is um, it's a middle class neighborhood. My mom was a nurse. My dad was a cop. So, you know, I, I don't have one of those stories to where as we didn't grow up having anything. I, had, I didn't have a lot, but we had what we needed. You know what I mean? Nope. So I had a I had a good 
a good childhood, I would say. You know, of course, Man. we dealt with the crime. We dealt with the shootings. We deal with all of that stuff. But I just, you know, I can't say that we were we grew up poor or anything like that. And you say you was raised you with know. your mom and your dad? Uh, my dad was there up until I think it was about 10 or 11 years old. But I still saw him after that. You Where know, did he just go? Split. Did they split up? Oh, uh, yeah, they split. So yeah, you saw him yeah. like weekends and... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you own a child? Oh, uh, no. I got um, a brother and I got three sisters. You the oldest? I'm the youngest. The youngest? You're the baby yeah, boy. I am the baby. So all yeah. of that split probably affected you the most. Yeah, yeah I would say so. Um, I, you know what it is? Is that it was certain things that my parents never Exposed. let me see, right? They mm -hmm. never argued in front of me. Never. They never cursed in front of me. But so that it's to like, me is hard. It because I went through that same thing. Well, I thing. didn't understand it, right? When they were that splitting, hurts. I was like, why? Y'all don't even argue. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I didn't understand it. But to be honest, it didn't really, like, totally stress me out. You know what I mean? Why? I just, I don't know. I guess I was different. You didn't feel kid, like I your guess. daddy was it gone? Really, like, yeah, he's like, not it's not there. like he was leaving the country or the state even. Like, he yeah. moved to Harlem. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And for you? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, just growing up, my running, um, I grew up. Raised by my mother. Money my mother. earning Mount Vernon? Money earning Mount Vernon, yeah. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's get it. Yeah, some history, some history. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But um, yeah, you know, raised by my mom's um pops, you know, was moving around doing this thing. Why is that I mean? such a thing? It's like I'm well, tired of hearing. I can tell that. you why. Uh, let me just break that because down. Because men you. are just rolling uh, stones. They don't this. like no, to stick, no, stick no, it no, out. No, That's no. why. And, and women, it's a difference. You know, uh, uh, sometimes you stay there. You know, the Bible says that a nagging woman is like a leaky faucet. So, you know, there's some things that, that, that are being said to where. But patience <laughs> is a virtue. <laughs> He said it. I ain't saying that. Just like that. He said the no. leaky faucet. No. <laughs> That's that. biblical. That's biblical. All I'm saying but is. patience is a virtue. It is it is definitely a virtue. But all I'm saying is there's going to be issues. The one thing we got to understand, guys, is that at the end of the day, with with God, all things are possible. I end it like that because, you know, whether you was whether they was together, whether they wasn't together, uh, I think God puts things back together in his own way anyway. You know what I mean? You guys are here. A lot of guys crashed out that didn't even make it to be our ages, your ages, and y'all still here? Come on, man, that says something. Y'all won. That's a blessing. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all no, won no, no, already, no, 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 man. You can think of people that are not here no more oh, because sure, they crashed right. out. Lots of them. Right. And, and right, they were right, friends right, of right. y'all's. Yeah. And you still right. here. For you know what I mean? So right. God has a way of working it out no matter yeah. what your upbringing is, is, yeah. is like. I mean, I, th I think, well, my situation, I think my pops was just, he was just hustling, doing his thing. And, you know, um, he was getting, getting, getting money, you know, illegally, you know what I'm saying, back then. And he was just moving around and he just... Found himself, you know, kind of doing them thing, doing this thing with like, you know, multiple women. You know, right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I, got, I got like it's, it's six of us actually. So you was he ever saying? there for you? Like, um, I'm not gonna yes, monetarily, but actually there to like no, talk to you and not help that, you. Not that way either. Like he just yeah. wasn't, he just wasn't involved. I, I'm actually, I'm actually, um, I actually have a better relationship with his brothers than him. Than him. But that happens. Saying. But your mom was attracted to him. At that time, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, Let's be real. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, you know, I, I guess I, I wasn't of age to really understand the dynamic right. of their relationship because, you know, by the time I, you know, I really, you know, grew up and understood that he wasn't, he really wasn't involved at all. You know, I was kind of just living my life, you know. And, exactly. And my, so you never felt like, down. okay, where's my dad? Like, why is he never around? Or was it a normal? Because I can see if you're in an area where it's predominantly raised, you know, boys are being raised by women, and you don't see that, you'd be like, yeah. okay, I don't miss anything because it's not like it's all around me. Yeah, you know, you know what, you know what? To be honest with you, I think I, I think my family did a good job of um kind of like kind of shielding us, you know, from from mm -hmm. from that part of our life. Um, you know, I was raised like not only with my mother but my grandparents was right. there as well, and um they 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 created a solid That's you know good. house. You know, for a solid um, family environment, home environment, you know, where we pretty much had, you know, what we needed. Again, not everything, but we had enough. Mm. And, and, um, and, and let me say this, yeah, uh, you know, don't don't knock it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cool because even if your daddy was there, some of these daddies messed up as hell and they in the house. This is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that for a minute. Just because they in the house don't mean that the house is perfect. There's still a big yellow elephant in the room that nobody talks about. When somebody knock on the door, you got to act in order to make sure people feel like you guys are representing correctly when you're faking. So quit, right. don't don't try to come to me with the, the dad ain't there and the dad is there and the mom is there and the mom ain't there. I, I seen better people who, who, was, who didn't have no parents. 
I've seen partners of mine who was brought up in orphanages. I just talked to one yesterday. Uh-huh. And then the twin brothers who came up with our parents who hell got books doing better than a bunch of niggas can't even write. You know but I see a lot of people right. go, right. but I, I see a lot of people who go through life thinking that it doesn't affect them, you know, because he's never been there, whatever, till you get older and you, when you realize the reason why you took certain steps or you made certain choices was because of that unknowingly. You know what I mean? Sometimes as we get older, we reflect because when you're younger, you don't see certain traits. You don't see the reason why we do certain things. But as you get older and you reflect, you realize, oh, you know what? That's probably the reason why I well, did this. Well, you know, you know, you know, to your point, I would say, um, you know, when I when I came of age and I understood, you know, you know what he was, what he was really all about and his upbringing, you know, um, I understood that, you know, growing up for him, he actually, um, he was kind of, he, he was actually abandoned, mm. you know, when he was younger. And I understood that I, it, it all made sense because it was like he, he he never learned love all right. the way. You know, he was raised by other family members, but his mother, which is my grandmother, God rest her soul, and also God rest his soul. He actually passed away from COVID. Wow, um, this man! Last, Sorry last to hear Christmas. that, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 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 you know, I never I never held any of that you know against him because I I was actually raised in a very loving way. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, for my grandparents, for my mother, um, and and you know, other family members being there. But 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 I understood for him that um. That uh, that uh, yeah, he never he never knew love, you know. Were he you felt, ab- sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, he felt he felt he felt abandoned, and um, he 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 could never he could never commit, right? You know himself to anything, you know, for a long period of time. Were you, you know? ever able to build a relationship with him before he oh, passed? Not, oh no, we know each other. We I I, I know him very well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just it's just that he was always moving around. He he would travel back and forth between you know the U.S. and Jamaica. You know, Cause I um, figured that's the yeah, Jamaican side yeah, yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't even do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I mean, both my parents are Jamaican. Okay, my, oh, my, oh, my okay, okay. Uh, but, but, I guess but, it's no, me and no, you now. No, with that, <laughs> and with that, and with that side, I understand, bro. You know, and, 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 and I think I think part of what helped, you know, me have a solid upbringing is because my mom's like she grew up in the hood in Jamaica. You know what I mean? So it's like where's she, she from? Was, Kingston. Yeah, she grew up in Kingston. Yeah, yeah I yeah, knew yeah, it. Whatever. So it's like for her. For her, it's like she had to be the mom's and her pop. So it's like, you know, when I was acting up, like she punched me in my chest. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it'd be like, yo, yo, get get yourself right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, she probably you know, watched she, Woman she, King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She she was very she was very open. You know, she didn't she she didn't really like bite her tongue, you know, that much around us and you know, kept it real, you know, so to speak. And you know, we and we and we just kinda, you know, grew up like hearing, you know, um uh, 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 adult conversations at an early age and How we many understood y'all? life. How many um, y'all? six all together. What, 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 just me and my sister. You know, with my so your mom. Yeah, with my moms, and then um, and then I got other brothers and sisters. Were you the younger for your mom or the older? I'm the younger one. So both of y'all yeah. baby boys. Yeah, entitled. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I want to say, man, you know, just I like the fact of how consistent you guys been in the things I've seen you mm-hmm. in, man, and just you guys' presence, man. Always made me feel comfortable. You know, I knew when I went to a show or something with you, you guys, I knew it was a show going down. You know what I'm saying? When I got off that plane and I was going up there to Vegas or something, I knew the show was going down when I ran into you guys. I said, man, right. I don't keep God dang it. I ain't yeah, been listen. working out. They go right. drink. No, I'm that nigga yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. That nigga just cool. Man, you look like heavy right now. Yeah, <laughs> Let's talk about that for me. I gotta talk about this, man. Yo, your diet and the way that you work out, man, being a part, you know, seeing your page and stuff. Was you always this size, or how did that happen, bro? Man, I, I was, I was, time. I started hitting weights at fourteen, right? Mm-hmm. But I started even, I was doing pushes, push-ups at like seven years old. Damn, yeah, it was like it's my life. I think, I, I think. I remember watching the movie Rocky Two with my dad okay. on TV, and that's what started. And I literally worked out forever. And I was like seven years old. I never stopped working out. It Yo, just came seven natural. years old. As soon as I turned fourteen, which was still too early, I started hitting heavy weights. I started doing like um, competitions, like local competitions. I was about to ask you about that. Does it affect you like when that. you start too yeah, early? Yeah, is a little early to lift weights. Like calisthenics is okay, which I do a lot of. But um, weights. You what probably, does it do? Weights used to do about seventeen. But what does it you do know? to you I mean, when you, you start too early? You said too early. Because I mean, they did say you it see? can stunt your growth a little bit, but you know, it's it's hard on the joints because you're not fully grown. Your growth place now, you're not all the way grown yet. So you need to get to that point to where. Did you see that kid on social media? It was a young kid, and he was like yeah, yeah, all yeah, yeah. swollen. Yeah, yeah, it's like, too early. Yeah, it's too early. yeah. I mean, me. Uh, if I would have waited to seventeen, I probably wouldn't have some of the injuries I have now. But yeah. I'm still good, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I just. 
I started early, it was just in love. And plus, I was always short. I'm only 5'8", so I was always the short kid. So I was like, if I'm going to be the shortest guy, I'm going to be the strongest. And that's Stop. what it was. I'm not going to lose. That's what it was. Did, did, kept, did, yeah. Anybody ever just be like, oh, he think he all that because he big? And I mean, you sure you get it. Just no one just don't come to me with no, it. No, no, no. Somebody, like, I see I've a white, heard, I've heard I seen a white dude up. bump a dude. You see that white dude walk around and bump them big yeah. guys? You've seen that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nah, that's yeah. Like, well, see me, I don't really like, I don't walk around like, you know, yeah. like that. Like, and then it takes a lot for me to go off. So, yeah, like, you know, yeah. I can have a conversation. Yeah, because you have weapons. I'm super calm. Like, I'm always like this. <laughs> well, you got a gun. Well, that's that's well, guns. That's yeah. weapons. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, you know, I can I can have a conversation with somebody and be like, okay, really? All right. You can walk away? You got it. Oh, yeah, no problem. But yeah. then the point is, if I give you all of these chances to, to stand down after that, then it's call the police. It's, you know, then it's nonstop because then I'm just going to dive on you. So, you know, cause I give you so many chances It's like you know Sir please You know what I mean Just relax man We here to have fun It's okay Just you know Yeah. But yourself, they say man. some guys you know? Are big for nothing Like not every guy Who is big can fight Or can that's, do anything yeah, That's not the case <laughs> I mean I started, I was taking a little bit Of martial arts When I was like 11 years old You know my dad So my dad Was in the military Very early right okay. So he did He did 17 years In the army Wow And then he did um, Then he came out And did 6 years In the air force then he came out, that was 23 years, and then he came out and did 20 years as a cop. So he told him about 43 years of service. Wow. So he was. Your dad you know was mean? straight so, business, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah. And this is your biological yeah. father. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so he was he straight was, business. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was always, you know, of course, when you I was to stay with him, he always had a gun. So that was never. Did you ever you know, go live with him? Uh, no, not live with him. No, I wouldn't want to live with him. <laughs> not, even, not even that he was militant because my dad was cool. He he had a bad attitude, but not towards me. I just was like, you know, he would, somebody cut him off from the street. He would pull out his badge and his gun. Like, <laughs> oh, he was yeah, tripping. He, yeah, he was he was serious with it. He was, like, <laughs> but not with me necessarily. You know, curious. Yeah. Um, how did you get in? Because for the height you are, you know, models normally be like way taller. Because yeah. I see on your social media that you actually ripped the runway. Yeah. So I'm like, how did that happen? It started with Carl Kanai. Like, that's my OG. So um, in 1995, I started doing some modeling. Um, I think I caught the eyes of some of Carl Kanai's people. And um, they reached out to me. And we started doing fashion shows. In New York, there's um, a TV show called Video Music Box from Ralph McDaniels. And he's like, you know, he was like before BET, before MTV, before all of those was mm -hmm. playing videos and hip hop yeah. and all that, he was playing that. So he started doing um, a fashion show Friday. called Fat Fashions. Wow. And um, when I first did that, that's like, if you're on that show, you pretty much a celebrity almost. Wow. So um, I had got on there and we just started doing all Carl Kanai fashion shows. Um, and you know, I was kind of known as like a Carl Kanai model, even though I wasn't signed, but I yeah. was just doing anything Carl Kanai. And then one day after a fashion show, I just came up to Carl, you know, and I didn't really know him, know him, but we high and buy kind of thing. And I was just like, Carl, I said, this modeling thing is cool, but, um, you know, I'm looking for something in the company, something long term. He kind of looked at me like, he was like, yeah, you know, he was like, damn, nobody ever said that. He was like, all right, cool. And then he had a guy named Brother Arthur, which you probably know about Brother Arthur. He used to be at the show yeah. back in the days. Yeah. And, um, he was kind of like a big brother to me. Yeah, he was in the yeah. nation of Islam. And he was like, man, just come to the office. So I would show up to the office like, what y'all need? Y'all want coffee? What you need? Yeah, intern. And Carl was living in L.A. Yeah. But he was like, QD again? Like, damn, boy, he's there again. He said, so one day he called me. He was like, he called the office and he was like, I got something for you to do. So he was like, he said, Carl wake awesome. up in the morning about like four or five in the morning every morning. Right? He was like, he watches, the he time it was like, Good Morning America, whatever that show is they had with Al yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he yeah. watched every morning. He said, tell Q to go down there with a car can I sign and hold it up. I want to see it. I'm going to be up. This is like he. This is like six, seven in the morning. He's like, I'm gonna be up. I want to see the sign, Carl That's Kanai. Fly. Tell him to go down there. And me, I'm like, I don't want to do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, wanna, I was like, you know what? Pay my dues. Yeah. I went down there for like two weeks. Had to sign up. Boom, he'd be on TV. He'd be like, oh, stay. yeah, I see it, Carl <laughs> Kanai. <I'm laughs> loving it. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, all right, all right. And then, so then one time, Al Roca actually came up to me. And he was wow. like, yeah, he was like, what's this sign right here? I said, yo, you know, it's a clothing line. It's a black and old clothing line. You know, he said, I said, if you give me your sizes, I'll bring you some clothes and stuff. Oh, but instead of me you thinking, a salesperson. Instead of me, him, me thinking he's going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. He was kind of like, nah, and this was heavy Al Roker at the yeah. time. Right. So he, he was like, uh, nah. So next thing you know, security came to me. He was like, yo, you can't be here no more. <laughs> he was like, yeah, he's like, he told it on you. Yeah, yeah, he was like, you can't Al be here no Roker more. snitch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is he still living? 
Yeah, he brown. He's yeah, skinny. I think, I think he's skinny now, though. I think. He's skinny yeah. now, but he, he's still living. He's a snitch, and right. I woke him. Say, you always want, man. You shut Carl can I sign down down there. You know, yeah, I, yeah, hey, yeah. I watch you, man. Don't do this. I told him it was black old, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then, you know, Carl was like, all right, that was a good job, man. And then I think, like, the following week, he was like, man, he said, yo, get that motherfucker a job. Wow. Mm-hmm. Straight up. He was like, get that motherfucker a job. Then I started working. I became a, a rep. Um, they gave me a certain territory, and then the territory was like New England territory, which is like five states in New England, which is like, it was nothing up there at the time. And I went out there, and I just started opening accounts. I would go to the club, like, yo, where you get your outfit from? Dude, they give me stores, started writing it down, and then I would just spend like a week out there, and I would just go to every store that people tell me. They get outfits, I'm like, yo, call can I? I'd be like, call can I? I was looking for this, boom. I opened up like 35 accounts in a year in wow. a territory that we didn't, I think we had five accounts in the whole territory. Man. And that's how, you know, it kind of started. And then I worked for Carl as a rep for five years. And then I left there. And then I started working for Fat Farm. Yeah, like I remember Fat Farm. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. you know who that is, yeah, man. Stop playing, that. man. And then when, um, when, I started, when I left there, me and Carl just became tight. So today, he's still one of my best friends. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Talk, I've seen y'all together. I've ago. seen y'all together yeah, a lot yeah, a few so, times. Um, so I left there and I was working for Fat Farm and I was on the footwear side, the footwear license. I was there for eight years. Then from there, I went to Rockaway. I was there um, on the footwear you, side as you well. You worked with, uh, how long were you I there? I worked with Udi on the footwear side. Okay, you were on the yeah, footwear on side. on the footwear side. So this was, um, it's licenses. So, right. you know, apparel is different. It's, almost, it's a different company. You know what I mean? It's still under the Rockaway umbrella, but it's a different company. Same thing with Fat Farm. So I did that, yeah. Dre, what was you doing? Just hanging out in Vegas when I seen you? Uh, <laughs> then I see you work. You worked for a cool and some old people, didn't you? Yeah, I worked for a cool for a period of time. I, you was a model. I seen you in some <laughs> model pics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I, I was, seen you in a few of them pics. Don't model. play. I'll pull them up. I was, pull them up. I was modeling, but I was like. You I was, was in walking, the mix. I was a walking <laughs> billboard for them. Yeah. Yeah. Rocking yeah. rockin their joints. But um, yeah, man. yeah. Those How'd you get cool. into it? Wow. So I started I started in the business Come about. Man. um. Yeah, man, this is like 2000, like around 2000. I was um, going to school at the time, I was in college, and I was working at Macy's. And um, while I was there, you know, um, me, me and a partner of mine who, who, who worked there with me, we was like, man, you know, we kind of, we kind of getting tired of this, man. Let's go. It, it was cutting the hours and stuff like that. And we was like, we gotta figure out how to get some bread. So we was like, man, let's start our own T-shirt brand up. So we just decided to get up one day and like, you know, take the train down, to, um, down to, down to Manhattan. You know, we went to uh, Macy's at Herald Square. Okay, I know where you at. And uh, you know, we was like strolling. Actually, before that, we we went down to Twenty Eighth Street. This is they used to have like these Broadway. Little, yeah, yeah, Twenty Eighth and Broadway. Spot, boy. Yeah, they, yeah, they used to they, <laughs> they used to have these little like there. warehouses in the buildings. <laughs> right. You go in, they just be selling blanks like everything. everything. Man. Yeah, yeah. So we was going in. We was like pricing out tees and whatnot. And I think they was trying to get us on the price. We was like, damn, this is expensive. You know what I mean? So anyway, on the way back, we stopped at Macy's. I'm like, yo, let me just walk through here, man. I ain't been here in a minute. And we went up to on um, the young men's floor, and they had just put in a Sean John shop. Okay. So we seen this dude over there. He had like dreads, and he was kind of like folding the clothes and all of that. And he was rocking Sean John. So he was like, "Yo, that must be the rep right there." So we just went up there, went up to him, and you know, we asked him, he was like, "Yo, you the rep for Sean John?" And he was like, "Yeah, mad cool." You know, shook our hands and whatnot. And he was like, "Yeah, I just got on a couple months ago." Da 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 da. He was like, "All right." I'm like, how is it? He was like, "Yeah, I love it so far." He was like, "All right, cool, cool." Anyway. That happened, we just went, you know, we just walked through, went back home, you know what I'm saying? Uh, about a week later, he shows up at the Macy's store I was working at in White Plains, him and his boss, and um, they came to do a shopping store. And he was like, yo, we met you like about a week ago. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 what's going on? Da, da, da. Anyway, um, they got to they got to setting up the shop and, you know, putting out the merchandise and we pretty much um, helped them the entire time and, you know, you know got, got them whatever they needed. And, um, and uh, pretty much by the by the end of the day, when they was getting ready to leave, uh, uh, his boss offered me a, a, a opportunity to intern. You know what? Okay, him. okay. So I'm like I'm like me. I'm like I'm like well, all right, shit. So I'm like Sean John. I'm like what I got to lose. You know what I'm saying? Big so, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was huge. You know, it, it, it was it was getting big actually. It was really getting big. This is probably like it's like 2000. So anyway, um, he was like, all right, bet. This is probably like on a Thursday. He was like, yo, meet me on Saturday morning. Uh, on Fordham Road in the Bronx. I'm gonna pick you up there and we're gonna drive to Brooklyn, Fulton Street, we're gonna go to King's Plaza and we're gonna go to Green Acres Mall um, and, we're gonna, and we're gonna set these shops up. It's a Saturday morning anyway. I was like, I, I ain't got nothing to lose, man. You know, and worst thing that could happen is, you know, I, opportunity comes out of it. 
So anyway, um, I get up, get up like 5.30, you know, meet them down in the Bronx. You know, we get to driving, we get to Fulton Street, we set up the shop out there. Um, and after we finished, we set up that shop, we went to go have lunch at Junior's, which, you know, those who know, you know, Fulton Street where Macy's is in Brooklyn, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's a Junior's at the end of the block that, um, that goes, that like, it's like at the intersection of like uh, Fulton and Flatbush, somewhere around there. And uh, we had lunch and he pretty much offered me a job. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah. I gotta you take know? this so, thing. So, um, so yeah, so, so, so anyway, we are, the day went on and we, we did the other two installs. We went to uh, King's Plaza, we went to Green Acres, did that. And um, yeah, man, he hit me up the next week and was like, yo. You've been on ever since. Yeah, and so, so, you know, I interned for about four months. And then um, after that, after those four months, like I was up in the office like often. So I was going to school in the evenings and early in the day, I would, I would, I would go there, you know what I mean? And um, just pretty much help out. And I was going there so much, similar to what Q said, like you, I was going there so much, like people started asking me, I was like, like, yo, did they hire you yet? And I'm like, no, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? But I was there and it was like, it was like, yo, it was like, yo, you're good, man. Like we, we, we need to get you on the team. Anyway, uh, you know, after those that four month period, you know, I got I got I got I got called into the office, you know, with the with the big big boss, and um, he's pretty much like, yo, we want to offer you opportunity to come in and assist, you know, the the the, the person who, you know, who brought me in as, a, you know, as an intern. So I was like, sure, you know what I mean, and um, and you know, uh, uh, it pretty much started right there, man. You, you know, know what I mean, and that's how I got in the business. I'm telling you, man. You know, you guys are, hey, man. When you first, like I said, going to Magic, that's how I know you guys, man. And I got to ask y'all this. When y'all first went, the first time you went, I want both of y'all to tell me, how was it and what the hell made you be there? Like, what brought you to the Magic? You know what I mean? What made you stay there? What made you you go? I want to hear your story, then I want to hear your story. When I first got there, right, so. Who invited you? I'm talking about when I first got there. No, so I I signed on the call, can I, right? So I was 20 years old Okay. at this time when I finally got the job. Right, my first magic. Of course, this is Vegas. I turned 21, so magic was Ooh. February. My birthday's in January, so I'm just able to get in and be in the casinos and all that. So this is like crazy. And then it was February, so I'm thinking this Vegas is hot. It's like 40 degrees at night. I'm like, what the? This ain't the Vegas <laughs> I know. <laughs> so then right. I get there, and I, I have no clue what to expect. No clue. I see this big ass white car coming. I'm like, oh, we. Popping out here, <laughs> and then it's you got to keep in mind. You got to keep in mind. This is 1997 now, right? Yeah. So there's hardly no black reps, right? So every any streetwear, well, really they called it urban back then, right? Any urban brand, there was no black reps, right? So yeah. like 1997, yeah. 97 was- right? It was Carl Canai. This was like just before Fubu. This was like yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? This was before uh, most of them. Was yeah. I think Maurice Malone was there. Yeah, yeah. A couple other ones was there at the time. So we get there and it's the whole sales staff for Cock and I was black. So I'm just like, man, this feels good. But then you also can see like you they looking at it. us like mm-hmm. you, they like you don't belong you know here. I mean? Yeah. So this was like almost the new era of was cross colors and was, was this, this? Yeah. So yeah, cross colors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, cross colors. Um, I'm trying to think of these brands, man. Yeah. At the time, because then <laughs> at the time, so like the the. The, the Sean Johns, the Fat Farms, the Rubles, they started to come. They wasn't right, there right, yet. Right, so they started to come about, so right? So Tommy Hill figured them uh, back then. Yeah, 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 of course. It was Hill figuring none them. of us. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, he wasn't rocking with y'all at all. <laughs> right, so, you know. They we look were, at you bad, then. they? You know, you could just see, they you like, yeah, and I'm young, I'm 21, too, so, you know. But they still don't look yeah, at you like nah, they just want you at certain places now. It was like, it was like crazy. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Definitely, so then, definitely a little bit of that. Yeah, because I, you know, Carl and I really brought the party to Vegas because that's when he started. This was before. Now you know, after that it was a party. There was ten parties yeah. every night. But Carl, it was the Carl and I was the only party in Vegas during Magic to go to. It was wow. the Carl and I party. That was it. Until all of the other brands started coming in, then everybody would do a party. Yeah, because we like to night. party. Yeah, we we, we yeah. got it. In. But that would bring excitement. So then after a while, I got people from New York like, "Yo, we going to Vegas for Magic." I'm like, "For what?" <laughs> like, you ain't in the business? What you going for? We going to party. I'm like, this is going to party. This is getting crazy. But the first time y'all went, did he he had a party set up that first time? or The first time, no. The first time. No, no. he had to feel it out first. That yeah, was, I mean, I'm, that was no. his, your first yeah. time and his first time was together? No, no, no. Carl was, he was he had doing already it. He been was, doing yeah, it. he was already been Yeah, Carl so started in 89. But he when you 89. got there, yeah. you get there, you kicking it. There was a yeah. party the first time you got there. 
No, I no. think probably the second. The second The time. second, pro- probably about the second time, I think. I wonder what prompted him to, I did think. he ever tell you what prompted him to do a party? Nah, I don't know. I mean, it was just a lot of hype around the brand and all the celebrities were wearing it and Carl was close with like Snoop and all these guys. So it was just like. It just made sense. Yeah, it just made sense to do it, you know? What was the first um, black brand ever? Do you know? Well, you you know, you had you had Cross Colors, you had Walker Wear. I know, but the first, black, first first black brand. I maybe say Cross Colors. Yeah. Also, I, the guys. Say cross the only name was Carl as well. I think Carl. It was like Cross Carl. Colors and Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Carl actually signed on. So there was no under, brand under, before under that. Carl from yeah, Cross Colors, and then yeah, he it. got into his own thing. But he actually originally was was uh, Carl brought him in. I yeah. got I, I, Yeah, because Tupac loved it, they call it now. He's where yeah. they call it Yeah, I'll tell you a story mm-hmm. with that. I, I'm going to make sure you get called on the show one day, too, man. I mean, But you know, well, you met, did you yeah. see, did you meet Tupac during I that I met time? Tupac, but not through call. I okay. met Tupac in New York, actually. Yeah, I met him in the tunnel. Oh, yeah, yeah, you was in one the of them guys. Did you walk up to him and uh, say something uh, to him? Nah, my cousin was, uh, my cousin was a rapper, um, Pudgy the Fat Bastard. Uh, he's out of New York, and he, I was, he's just, I was amazed. He knew everybody. I'll tell you, in the same night, I met Tupac, Easy E, Met the Man, Biggie. Same night, same club, in the tunnel, same night. And that was the, that was the night that, um, the last night that Easy E, he was in the club, and I think he passed away a couple weeks after that. Wow. Yeah, that Did he look sick? Night. Huh? Not at all. Not at all. Did you talk to any Not of them? Um, when you say you met them, me I and like, them, I hey, think, my um, name is such and such. Did um, you meet them he, like that? He was really close with Tupac. So he he would have like long conversations with Tupac, but he just always made sure, my cousin would always make sure like that I, that I shook hands. He was okay. like, if you ever, if I ever introduce you and you shake hands, it's somebody I love. He's like, I'm only gonna introduce you to the killers and somebody I love. So if you shake their hands, it's because I love them or they're a killer. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said to me. He said, that's, that's real. That's yeah, real. Yeah. So so yeah. So I met a lot of them um, back then. But Carl, man, he was just like, that man's the OG right there, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He he like, really is because, like I said, yeah. when I seen him out there. He, <laughs> when I seen him out there, he was uh he 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 just you and him strolling along. We was at drills one night. Yeah, I seen y'all. Y'all was kicking it. I said, yeah. look at them boys, man. They got it going on, man. That boy right there is pinnacle, man. When it comes down, because <laughs> I'm talking about the clothing, man. I, it's yeah. just I used to wear a car I yeah. like before all this when I was in the streets. So I really I loved uh, his brand. Like yeah. I, I remember the last one I had was that brown. one you remember stayed in the closet, you remember mm-hmm. for the longest. I don't. Mm-hmm. I think I finally gave away, but I'm gonna have to give me some. I'm he a lot of you had this. Now. You had the sandals to go with it too. That used to work. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that car can I, man? I, I used to that love was it. That a huge bro. deal he did with sketches, actually. That yeah, was a huge mm-hmm. deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I rocked yeah, it, man. Back then, it was it was no deal like that. He had a big deal with sketches. Man, so yeah. I heard y'all talking earlier about the the blocks, the streets, man. Y'all y'all so passionate about. Yeah, you go down here to Fulton and such. And such. We don't give a damn about that in Texas. <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. but then I met people down there. Like I met this one guy. He's like, I sell bags. I've been on this block for thirty years. I'm like, damn. You know, and he's serious. Yeah, I'm serious. He was serious about that block. So for you to leave New York, that's a big deal. You know, so go, you leave niggas stay on this block forever. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So I'm well, you know what? That's the that's the beauty of being in this business and um, having the opportunity to travel. You know what I'm saying? Like you I mean, see I, I, other I, things. Yeah, yeah. I could say I could say this. They might be like maybe nine, ten states that I haven't that I haven't been to. You know what I'm saying? But you got to tell me your first magic though. Don't try to get out of oh, it. I mean, my first magic. I <laughs> yeah. mean, first magic. I, I was I was I was wet man behind the edge. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't even I didn't even expect it to happen when it happened. It literally happened like I left like two days before I, I knew I was going. Oh, you know, because um, because my boss who actually brought me in at the time he left the company, so I kind of like had to like fill his shoes until they found somebody to replace him. So it's like they didn't have anybody else to kind of, you know, represent that department at the show. So it was like, yo, we need you to go. And at that time, I'm dealing with, like, I was dealing with department stores at that time. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't okay. even on the sales side. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I used to be um, involved with, like, merchandise and shop development and stuff like that. So I'm working with, like, department store, you know, presidents and GMMs and DMMs and regional. This one, it was all together like it is now, just at that one building. Yeah, 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 yeah. everything right. was solid, the, but it was more yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. It was way more right. people. Las Vegas right. Convention Center, right. yeah, there. right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so yeah, man, and it's like you know, I had to, I had to deal with like all of those guys, and you know, so my first show, like basically the way the way Sean John was set up, you know, for that particular time, I don't know how long it went on because because I wasn't there for, you know, for I left maybe like two years later, but um, we had to go to the, go to Vegas in suits. 
or 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 the days of the shows, we actually had to wear suits. And at that time, it was the show was four days. Yeah. It's a four day show. So I think like the first day the color was like black, second day was gray, tan, and then you had navy. And I I, I didn't have any suits. <laughs> you know what I mean? So 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 you know the big boss of the company um gave his assistant a credit card and was like, yo, you gotta take him out shopping. This is like when I, I touched down and he was like, yo, we're going to the mall, we're going to Caesar's Palace. We got to go shopping. Oh, you, you, you know loving I mean? it, you loving yeah, it. Yeah, they took care of me. You know what I mean? Wow, they sized you up and everything. Right, yeah. And this this was this was all done in like one afternoon, going Man. into the evening. Yeah, and um, and then, and then I was straight. Yeah, but um, but. What, but what? Give me that first drunk night when you got drunk and fell out. <laughs> oh man, um, you know what, what, what happened in Vegas? You know what, in Vegas you, know, you know, you know what? Whatever happened on the show today on the show, I feel like because you know I'm in, I'm in a different place right now. But um, but yeah, like my first like wild night came like really quick out there. Like um, I just went out for dinner with the company. Um, that same night we met we met Puff. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah? yeah, he was staying in this hotel. I don't remember, I don't remember what hotel he was staying in, but I know it had like two floors in there. The TV came up out of like a little chest in front of the bed, and and it, it was it was fly. You know what I mean? Like he was like, "Yo, yeah, this is real, yo." You know? Yeah, and, it's um, up. So so we so so we left that, and um, we were everybody's like driving back to their hotel, and um, um, you no, know, the director of marketing was like, "Yo, yo, what you doing?" I'm like, "I'm just going nothing. You know, I'm just going back to the hotel." He's like, "Yo, you want to come out with us?" So I'm like, "All right." And um, they took me to Crazy Horse. I don't know if you. Oh yeah, that I know spot, what Crazy yeah. Horse. Yeah, took me to Crazy Horse. That was my first time going to an establishment like that. You got lit. And, an um, establishment. <laughs> <laughs> yo, it was crazy. And, and, and we probably got there like maybe ten o'clock at night. They left at about. I mean, bought me my first my first uh, dance, and um, they left at about maybe two o'clock in the morning. I didn't leave till like five thirty. Yo, the sun Damn. was coming out. And, um, and you had to be at the booth. And I had to be at the booth, so I just went back to the room, showered, and, and came back. That's that's like that was it. That was, yeah, that was a long many time ago. Hey, hey, you, know, you did that too, though. Many many nights. Nights. <laughs> Is it yeah, many, many nights? nights the club, yeah. like, and then yeah. she, you got to go home, and you still got alcohol coming through your pores, <laughs> and it's like you shower right. up, you go to the booth, and they like, did you just come for the club? <laughs> I, I took a shower, like. It's coming through your pulse. Oh, right. hey, man. So, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, do do what? Okay, you guys are reps, man. Like, you, you guys, not just reps, but you guys know clothes, man. So, what are the brands that are popping out for you guys? Because everybody, you know, from, like I said, Kenyatta, whether it be Will, the one here, all these different guys, man, uh, they live and breathe these brands, you know. Um, Ralph, you know, all mm. these different people, man. I, I just, what's going on right now with the clothes well, brand? Well, 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 I start by saying, you know, right now, right now, um, it's a little bit different than, than 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 what we all came into, you know, back in those days, fifteen, you know, twenty years ago, whatever. Um, where it's like you had like a custom base who were dedicated to certain brands, mm -hmm. like like okay, we'll throw some names out there. Like if you were a Sean John customer, all you wore was Sean John. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and 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 that retailer knew that he could buy that whole collection, and he's gonna have that certain customer base that's just gonna come in there for that brand. Then you had a, a Rockaway customer. You know what I'm saying? Where all he rocked was Rockaway. That was his. That was his thing. You had a Parish or a Nietzsche. Oh, you know I'm saying? Uh, Fat Fuji. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And 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 that was that was that back then. Today's customer really has no loyalty to any brands, and there's so many more options mm -hmm. out there. You know what I mean? At that time, there was really like limited options. You know what I mean? But now it's like trends trends move so fast. You know what I mean? That it's like it's it, it's hard to get to, to really get a solid um a solid grab on the younger customer now. You know, the older customer is still the same. He hasn't changed. You know, he's just, he's just you know, more advanced in life now yet. You know, he's likely got a family, he's got a solid job he's holding now, he's got a house, he's got, he's taking care of his responsibilities, and, but, but, but he's still attached to that era, you know what I'm saying, that was his, probably his favorite era, you know, so he's like, yo, I still want this type of look, you know, for my, for my fashion. Is you that know the same saying? thing you're seeing? Same yeah, thing? He, I mean, he said it well, it's, it's really an item-driven business now, so mm -hmm. it's not, they're not supporting the brands, right? So they're, not, they're not saying, I need this one brand. They're like, you got stacked denim, right. I need stacked denim. You got an oversized tee, I need an oversized tee. They're right. just, you know, they'll get it from another brand. They don't necessarily necessarily have to have it right. from that Whatever specific the trends brand. Are, that's what as long mean. as you, yeah. you have the look, they're gonna buy the look, whoever has it. When I first so. got into these clothing, and this store been here for 16 years, I had another store, like four stores at one time, but 
these pictures I would put on each wall at each store just so people would know that these brands were coming from a real genuine place mm -hmm. because of coming to a mom and pop, they don't have that sense of security to say, oh, is this real? Right. And they'll, you'll get that in these mom and pops. And so, you know, uh, I put those, you know, situations up there. How big of a part do the artists play now, and I'll ask you this, uh, in helping those brands to, to move? Is it still the same driven space with this internet world we live in? Or is it now you have to be looking at it from a different perspective? Well, it's a little easier, you know, because social media is free, right? Like before to promote, we asked to, we have, used to have to spend $10,000 for a page in a source magazine, right. you know, $20,000 for a page in a right. Vibe magazine. Now you can literally have 1 million followers and you post it and now you just reached 1 million people. So it's much easier that way. But there's still licensee deals, which a lot of people don't know. They think that sometimes, you know, if a guy has a brand that automatically he's the owner and that's not necessarily the case. You know, he might own the name, but you, if you're signing a licensee deal, then he's getting a royalty, right? Mm. And the company is really doing most of the work, but he's the face of the brand. Wow. Yeah. Any questions? No, sir. You sure? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can think of in this clothing world? Because, you know, you are clothing... Uh, um, want to say she pick a lot of stuff. When, yeah, we know. And, and, she but, she but, see, you yeah, walk off and you be like, like hey, she gonna handle it. Yeah, I'll be trying to get away. You know, <laughs> he was trying to go around and talk. <laughs> <laughs> what we can what we can do is we can tell you the brands that are hot right now that we're selling, you know, as independent salesmen. Yeah, you see in the sales bitch just came out. You see the sales bitch just came out. Right right ah, so so what you got? I yeah. asked you that question. Right, for listen, reason. listen, for your for your audience that's watching, you know, we got things like Smuggler's Moon, Premium Denim, you know, some of the illest denim you're gonna find in the market, beautiful mm -hmm. washes, you know, comes with you know all the cool bells and whistles that you wanna see, you know, stash pockets on the legs and you know, just really, really good quality denim. He also has a denim line on called Doctrine, okay, that he, that he does as well. It's a stack stuff. denim, yeah. You know, um, we have our streets is watching, you know. Oh, you always, yeah, that's that's the right, one there, right? Right, and, 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 and as I'm as I'm as I'm putting these brands out there, mind you, these are all black owned brands, yeah, yeah. yeah streets is you watching, my boy. Y'all not right. know that boy, Black, black right. Leaf, too. Black, black, black Leaf, leaf that's my boy, Gary. Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop right. playing, yeah, you know, but, I know. Yeah. but right. when you're so. talking about all these brands, one thing I've always seen when you go to the magic show is that, um, depends on what's in style, a lot of these brands replicate each other. Um, whether it be off brands or you know premium brands or whatever, because it's whatever is trending is what a lot of these brands go with, except from their core styles. You know their core styles stay the same because people buy it all year round. But whereas like fashion and trend, you know because it comes in and goes out. Why would people want to spend the money to buy the premium name brand stuff rather than to go buy well, something else that is similar? You know within. It used to their, be the way to where is if you wanted you know, Fat Farm, you going to get Fat Farm. You right. know what I mean? It's a little bit different. They're just not supporting the brands anymore. They'll take exactly. the look. Exactly. And, and, you know, personally, a part of me bring, blames the retailers, right? Because before, you had to have, let's say, the top five, whatever it is, the Fat Farms, the Carl Canals, mm -hmm. the, the Chargers, whatever. You whatever. had to have that, right? Mm -hmm. What the retailers started doing is they would buy, you know, the guy that looks like Fat Farm, right? So you're actually training your customer to now be able to buy the other stuff. So instead of having the top five guys, he would have, you know, two of them and then sprinkle in all this other stuff that was non-named who just took from the top guys and just put it in at a lesser price. But now you're training your customer because he's like, damn, this looks like that. Is fifty dollars less. Let me just get that. So and then that, you, the trained the you trained him. You trained him. So yeah. now he's like, you know what? I don't get this. So it started pushing brands of the way. So if you look now, there's not really that many collections left. There's brands, but there's like a t-shirt here, a t-shirt there. It's not really collections. Back then, if you will look at, you know, Rockaware, this whole wall would be Rockaware, right? You get the jackets, you get the sneakers, you get the shoes, you get everything you can think of would be that one brand. I don't know if I can blame the, um, the retailer because for the main fact that you know, being in this business for all 15 years, we had clients who come in and, you know, they would want the rockerware from head to toe. You could not even try, even if you did try to say, hey, you can, you know, wear this other shirt with that. It matches this rockerware. Yeah, you know, this looks good with this, but I'm out of this size. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why somebody might try to sell them a shirt from a different brand because they're out of this size. You were a large, but I already sold a large. Here, let me sell you a, um, a large in this they, other brand. They, they, but the dedicated people would be like, 
No, I ain't going. Who who mixes brands? Right, right, that right, was back in the day. Right, yeah, but right. now it's yeah, like, right. oh no, I get a rock and wear pants and put on a Sean John shirt, and as long as it matches, who's gonna look inside my tag or yeah. who's gonna look? Because brands are not labeling, and this is where the clothing brand could say that they're at fault. They're not labeling their outfits where people know that okay, oh, you wearing a rock and wear pants with a Sean John shirt. Uh, they're having these yeah. small tags on here, so nobody well, can it tell. The, the, the state of the business changed. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, things are not as gaudy. Like, you don't want any right. brand Those full on here. And that's right. what's right. allowing right. the buyers right. to mix and match because of that main well, fact. It became a price thing, to be honest with you. Like, back then, right, let's just be honest for a second. Drugs, drugs drove the business, right. right? Right. You had your store how many years? Sixteen. Long time. So more than that. So when the one these takes probably about seventeen. 18. But we had those dope boys who used to come in and buy right. a yeah, lot so of clothes and stuff like that. I had stores that would literally tell me, right? This could be a Tuesday, right? They, they, their top dope boys would come to the store mm -hmm. and be like, "I'm gonna I'm close my door. Nobody could come in. Let these three right. guys shop, yeah. right? They all spend three thousand yeah. dollars each. Maybe I'll close for the rest of the day. Maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. It really drove the business. So exactly. back then. You can, you know, there was no, there was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's no day where you're not making thousands of dollars. Now, mm -hmm. I can go and go into a store and sit and talk to a guy for an hour, not one person to come in. Here, or three people can come in and nobody bought nothing. I gotta, exactly. I gotta say this, man, because I hear all that spiel, you know, a lot of knowledge in here. A lot of knowledge. That's right. Respect. Big respect. But I think there's a thing that's going on also with the marketing strategy. I feel like they're not putting it out the way they should with the way the resources we got now. It could be done in a way that's strategically placed in a place where you have to, like you said, that million subscribers. There, there are places, man, whether it be uh, bigger platforms than this one. You got the Breakfast Club. You got uh, you got all these different, not only podcasts. You got a pod, Joe Rogan. The, Mike Tyson even got one. You have to start thinking outside of the box, right? Everybody watching certain things. I think people are not hustling hard enough. I'm being real. I'm, I maybe maybe I'm tripping. Well, because it's I easier. mean, like if you get to these people and say, "Hey, man, you do this, man. I'm gonna do this." I'm pretty sure they would do it, but people not thinking like that no more. They just basically just sitting back. COVID made a lot of niggas n uh, lazy, bro. Like it's a lot of things that you could be doing because there's new. You got you got different people that are are, are, are these these uh, viral moments going into these people who are making them happen. There, there are these people out there. But if we market it on that level to what's catered to what's going on today, right. what do you think would happen? Well, I, I think I think. I mean, you know, I'm gonna say yeah. this. I didn't mean to cut y'all. Right. Let me finish this. Uh, once, uh, what was them 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 ones that they used they used to they was killing they were killing y'all too. Uh, they the, the girls Cardi B wear them. What, what's that brand stuff? No, no, it wasn't no big brand like that. Reebok. No, the one where they would come on, they would get these clothes to these people, and they was on the internet. It was it was Cardi B, all of the different celebrities. They what type sent, of clothes was it? It was just some regular clothes. They would send them to them. And they fashion would, over. Fashion over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fashion yeah. over hit hard in the middle well, of yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Again, that's fashion social over. media. It's social media. That's they what I'm telling you. That's, that's what, what I'm telling not, you. Let's not, but hold on. Let's not, get this, let's not get this confused. Fashion over. Pretty little thing are paying these people. This is don't Correct. don't think that Correct. they're giving I know this that. stuff. I know that. I they know are that. paying these people to do this. Like you, you know. So it why depends. don't these big brands pay That's these people what I was to do saying. it as well? Well, not saying, <laughs> not saying that they don't because you know some the of them nature, do. The nature of the some of them do has definitely changed. But you see where I'm coming from, right? My, right, my right, thing right. is, my thing is like to a certain extent, like where we came from, right? Carl was on the ground doing this himself, right? It, the way that Tupac wore the stuff, it was basically set up. He went to go meet Tupac, right? In a room. Tupac is in there reading a the script. He's not really paying Carl no mind. Da -da 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 -da. And then Carl is basically like, yo, you know, what's it going to take, man? How much I got to pay you to, to wear my stuff? Tupac was like, you black. You ain't got to pay me nothing. Literally, they became tight from that one moment. That's big. That was Pac's statement. That's big. So think about that, right? Like, you want to come up, you know, you're my brother. I'm trying to help you out. Like, yeah, once you get big, yeah, pay me. But guess what? You want to come up just like I am. Let's help each other, right? He started wearing this stuff. You see where it took, you know, where it took Carl. So 
That's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't always have to be about money. Right, and some right? people are like that. I'm yeah. not saying that. But some people are not like that either. But if you're at the point where you already got it, then yeah, you're not going to not pay me for some stuff right. I'm going to do for you. Correct. But, you know, if you all on the come up, then come on, let's do this together. I just think the marketing got to be on that level. We got to market it. Because well, even on the rap yeah. music, all this stuff is mentally being pushed to you market-wise. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. I think we got to be on top of that if we're going to keep these brands on another yeah, because you're right. Because sorry, but when when you think about premium brands, premium brands used to do placement on rappers and actors, actresses, whatever. So, but now it's become a thing where who's hot, the brand ambassadors, the internet, whatever. And you never saw them switch and did that, except from mm -hmm. as like he said, the fashion overs and stuff like that. But where the premium brands are concerned, you hardly saw them doing that. And that's what we're saying. They'll do a that photo why, shoot. That's about it. Why not? Why didn't they switch with the curve and and jump you know on what? that lane? And it ain't too late. But I, but I like to come back with the question to you, right? <laughs> no, no. And this is this is real because think about it. Like, why is it that Gucci doesn't have to do it, but we should, right? It's like you're asking the question, right? And I'm not saying you, right. but this is the question that gets asked all the time, right? So you know, same thing with Carl. They used to ask Carl, "Why your your clothes are so expensive?" All right, if I was a white man, would you be asking me that? So why are you asking me that? I'm mm -hmm. black, I can't make expensive clothing. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. So like, why is it that, you know, all of these hot rappers can go buy Balenciaga, Gucci, they and do. all this other stuff, but then you're not going to buy your own, you know, your own brother's stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a question. Like, who can answer that for me? <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to look cool because you're going to buy the European stuff, they but do it all why not stuff. buy your own? Why yeah. not support your own? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Because they honestly don't care about you. <laughs> no, it's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we care about you, but... Bro, you know how many people come in this store and do this show? And, and a lot of them, but we know the ones that, like Mike Jones and even Rainwater. Like, it's certain ones that they're not going to come in here. They're going to come buy something. They're going it, to... It's been a bunch of them. Uh, Sir Charles Jones. You can, you, you can tell the ones who really... Ooh, they're going to support you just because you're a black owned business and they here to do this show. Right. They not for right. to play with that because yeah. it's been guys drive over here just because of this show. I'm like, man, I just got to buy some guy was here yesterday. I just got to buy some man. Cause at the end of the day, you know, y'all, y'all show love and y'all black. And this is, this is a real thing. Another, another but, example um, is, go ahead. sorry to cut you off, but like, all right, if you're going into the Gucci store, you asking for a discount? No, no. Right. So why should you go into the brother man store and ask for a discount? But when you think about that, you know, when we were talking, I thought about one other person. Um, I think it's more, I'm not going to say, yes, it has to do with black and white, but it also has to do with, you know, status of the brand. Because look at Yeezys. Yeezys is a is Kanye. Mm -hmm. But they're not going into those stores or, or, and be like, hey, I need a discount. Well, I need this. I need from a whatever. black owned store, you're going to ask for a discount. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you go into Adidas to get easy, you're not asking for a discount. Yeah, like, and he knows that too. You know what I'm saying? Right? He, he knows yeah. that. But how many Yeezys are in black owned stores? Oh, there's a lot. There's it's a lot. Some, it's, it's, it's some might not be as much as you know, you see, but there's a lot. You go to Chicago to these partner store, yeah. I guarantee there's some Yeezys in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it, it, it's I think it's we, out here. we all have to be a part in. I'm not saying, you know, retail, I'm not saying you know, us, but just we all have to be a part of that. Like, I we got to so support too. each other. I don't mind. Like, yeah, I got Gucci, you know what I'm saying? But. You know, I, I want to be able to support, you know, I want to be able to support us. And we all should be supporting us. Right. Mm -hmm. Already. Well, hey, man, uh, in, in, let me see. How can people get a hold to you if they're trying to open a, a new brand? Open a new brand, uh, yeah. trying to holler at, you know, get the real, you know, because you guys are, you guys are staples. You guys are, are, are the, you you guys are like, like the the Kenyattas and like the Jerry's and like the Ravs. I, I respect all of y'all, man, because y'all y'all work so much. Lisa, who called me last week, I was so happy to hear from her because I hadn't heard from her. But just different stuff like that. Like 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 you guys are those guys, man. So it, everybody that's watching this show got to understand who these guys are, man. These guys are the guys that, who they just explain themselves to be, man. Carl Kani, Sean John, these guys been in the game for a long time. So at the end of the day, just give me a spill on how can a person really link up with you if they're trying to do something? They own a store. How can they, how can they get at so you? So we, you know, we learned the business, right? And what the business has taught us is that we have to have our own as well. So even though we're representing these brands, we now have our own business, right? So Great. he has his business, which is called Green Room Sales. Okay. You know, I have mine, which is Qualified Sales. It's a Beautiful. sales agency. So now instead of working for one brand specifically, 
we contract multiple brands Dope. and we put the brands in stores. So that's right. what we do. So, okay. you know, for me, mine's just qualified sales. You can easily DM me on Instagram. It's at qualified 113. That's Q-U-A-L-I-F-I-E-D 113 on Instagram. Cool. Yep. And um, easiest way to get a hold of me is by email. Uh, you can email me at greenroom sales number one at gmail.com. Again, that's greenroom sales number one at gmail.com. Well, man, hey, man, did we get everything? Did we did we turn everything upside down? Yes, sir. Yes, I just, just, just want to say I'm proud of you, man. I man, love this. Hey, I love man, this, man. Hey, man. I've been hey. a subscriber already hey. for a while. You know what I mean? Right. So, Boss talk all the way, listen, baby. Man, listen, man, I love it. I love man. the progress, man. I love it. Man, you know, we always hustle and try to figure it out. You know, this black love thing, it, man. man. I've been seeing it for many Doing years. Man, you know? been going on. People think it's, it, they don't, they think it's nah, just boss talk. They like, oh, uh, what? You know, as soon as I started showing, you know what these niggas say? Oh, he, she gonna leave him. I'm like, what? <laughs> Listen, man. Damn, look, cut the camera uh, off. Yeah. She, she a boss, too. You know what I mean? Y'all locked in. Y'all locked in, man. It's been 20 right. years, man, and we've been hanging in all this That's time, bro. So we're just trying to do what's right. You know, we got kids. We got family. We try to be uh, uh, we try to be family to the people that come on this panel, too. So it's been a lot of people. Like I always say, God put us here for a reason. This is my ministry. I get to talk to a lot of these young people, uh, people that sit in those seats, uh, Three this year died, got killed. One, two got killed. One, one died. died from natural, and they was all young. Yeah, the, twenty-two. You know what? That's twenty-one. That's something I want to pray so, for. So pray we, for the youth. But when you when you get a chance to speak to them, like I get. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to right. give them something that's gonna take them somewhere. Yeah, this right. ain't just this ain't just your average run of the mill show. That's a fact. This is a show yeah. that get to speak to young brothers who may have some music, who may not make it to next year. Yes, sir. But I get a chance to talk right. to them. Right. And you mentioned earlier, you know, we 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 are uh, we we not saying that we up there in age, but we getting up there. And Come it's on like, now. It's a, it's something to celebrate. It's you know something to celebrate. Like, like you, can't, you, can't, yeah. you can't see us in the street and be like, ah. Oh, so now, you, you better, we you made better, it. You, you better pray you make it to that age one day. <laughs> you remember they used to say that to us when we were young? You didn't even yeah. think, know what they were talking about. They'd be like, you better hope. you like, you old. We'd be like, man, you better hope, man. You better pray you get to my age. I heard people say that. Now I'm that guy. I think about right. it sometimes. Right. I'm like, I can't believe, man. I'm yeah, man, in my 40s, man. I'm <laughs> Wow. We got kids and all of that. That's you know a blessing. It's like you know, we 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 just we're just trying to pour into our children now. You know what I'm saying? Like the lowest hanging fruit, try to pour into them so that they could they could go out and when they interact with others, they'll kind of take that same energy that we're pouring into them and pour it into their friends and yeah. you know what I'm saying? They create a more positive environment around them, and that's that's man, where we, where we do at right now. Do me a favor, man. I gotta like, read this um, because you were talking about the three people that passed away. Okay. So I had. Um, the other day we interviewed um, LD, which is she's the manager yeah. of one of the guys who had pa gotten killed. Got killed. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a group of kids behind Bunch her. Of them. Some of them were was his brother, and some of them yeah. was cousins and friends and last so forth. Week. So I just got a message from the mother of two of the kids that were here. Wow. And she said, "Hi, my name is, um, and I'm the mother of AK and Jacoby." two of the kids that were at the interview with LD about Strap. I just wanted to say thank you so much for talking to my kids about God. It was like God answered my prayers because I've been praying that my kids would have a closer relationship with God, especially after losing Strap. So thank you so much and God bless you. See, that, that's awesome. I, you know, that's what it's about. Mentoring is something that, you know, we do as well. And please, you know, even her, feel free, man. You know, you got you got these young guys who who's some of them is just they just need a little help. You know, a yeah. little guy that's need a big brother. Please reach yeah. out to me. You know, yeah. something yeah. I love to do. That's right. like my passion. Me and him, are, you know, we're men of God. Man. Um, you know, we serve on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. So please mm -hmm. mentoring is is it's close to my heart. Man. You know, so if you guys man, got, right. you know, kids, anybody listening, that you got some young men that need to just have a big brother figure, please reach out to me. Man, that's, and what's that's your what's your, what's your handle again? Qualified one thirteen on okay. Instagram. Yeah. Man, I have right. a, you can email me as well, qualified sales at Gmail. Okay. Man, if it's anything we can do, same thing. We here, Boss Talk here. We in the city. We out here in Dallas, man. We out here doing our thing, man. But really, God got us and he ceased to be an example to be um, mentors, yeah. to be uh, ministers, to help these people, man, to help not only the kids, but also the grownups. I gotta say that, because so many people say, oh man, but I read a book where you don't 
you don't say I'm going to help this and I ain't going to help that one. Matter of fact, you got to help whoever God put in those seats or in your life because you might say something to that person that can erupt change in that person's life just by you speaking change into them Mm -hmm. because there's power in words. So what you say matters. And if you speak positivity into somebody, it don't matter what age they are. They can change, man. That's a fact. Hey, man. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we have. Yes, sir.